Hey, what's up everyone? Get ready for an update, cause here it comes. So how's everybody doing? Okay, so it's long overdue. The update's coming. Um, but before we get to the update, time to give the uh, answers to the hints that were put out in a video that was about one or two videos ago. Uh, you'll notice that in the beginning uh, of that video, I gave the hint out, good morning reefers, and then did this. Basically what that was, was a call out to Danny over at Coral Lust just to let him know we're watching. And the second hint for that video was you will notice there were corals in the tank that weren't there before. Uh, I had never mentioned them. And on this update, I'm going to show them to you, tell them where they came from, and uh, basically give you an update status on what's uh, happened with them. Also, um, on this update, pay attention to the rock work because I did some rock work on it. So uh, basically, with that being said, let's get to the video. Okay, so in this update, we're gonna start again at the trachea, uh, like I do normally. Um, you can see the trachea, it's just started, uh, it's early in the morning, so it's just starting to fill out. That will get up um, a lot thicker during the day, that will become. But what I wanna concentrate on is the button scoli on the left. You can see just how big it's got in, since the last update. I mean, it's now totally off the plug and it's starting to go down to the sand. So I'm really impressed about the growth on this coral. Up on the tower, you can see uh, the how much since the last update the Hollywood Stunner Chalice has gotten. And I'm really impressed about the growth on that coral, but it is a very fast growing coral. So it'll do well in pretty much anybody's tank. Up here we have the red uh, digi, and also a new addition is the red forest fire digi from Fish of Hex. Uh, you can see it's starting to encrust now onto the tower and grow out. Right over here we have two favias, one that's been in the tank for a very long time. And you can see it's kind of a slow growing coral, but you can see right there how the eyes are splitting off and forming separate eyes. Uh, and this one is from Aquarium Care Center. This one on the other hand, um, when I first got it was a lot smaller and has grown a little, probably double in size since um, I put it in the tank. So. It's interesting to find out how two different corals, basically of the same genus, um, and their growth rates differ. Right over here, the blastos are doing really well and forming, uh, I think I can get a shot of them right here, uh, babies underneath the main polyps right there. Here is the green and blue torch coral and I put it over here because I like it better over here. It's filling out the shelf, and I think that's where it's gonna stay. You can see that how much growth has happened on the, the red setosa from Fish of Hex. This is also another Fish of Hex coral, and Hex, if you can give me a name on this, I'd appreciate it if you watch the video. Um, it's really nice, it's, it's almost like a green, like a lemonade kind of acro. I've gone acro crazy, as you'll see in a minute, and um, it's starting to shape how my my tank is going to be laid out. Um, since the last video, there's been some rock work done, and you'll see that on a, coming up shortly, but also what my intentions are is to, to zoom out and give you a wide shot of the tank, um, something I do rarely. You know, I don't really put big, long, wide shots of the tank out enough, so I'll get that to you shortly. Now, moving down, here's the maize brain coral, and 
the infamous birthday cake. The birthday cake looks like looks like it's melting now and spreading all over the rock. The maize brain is growing well and spreading onto the rock as well. Uh, here is the little little frag of the um, green encrusting Monty, and it's doing pretty well there. The pops are all green, but it's slow growing because it's in an area of low light. Moving down, you can see the A can section really doing well. The pink A cans right here are uh, start. I laid that on a piece of rock, and now they are starting to grow on top of that frag plug. So I'm going to fill that out and uh, let that encrust over top of it. So this way, I'll have a nice colony there. The orange and, and green ones really doing well. The, I got a, the rainbow group right here is doing well, as well as the, the main first colonies that I had are starting to get together here in the middle. And uh, it's gonna be interesting to see what turns out there. Here we have the, they appear green on um, the video, but these are actually yellow um, rainbow acans. They like where they are and they like the flow they're getting and they're spreading over that shell in that rock that I put below them. Here we have uh, my Rastas and you can see right there, you can see right there a problem I'm having and um, that is I picked up an Aptasia anemone from some frag that I put in the tank and it's starting to get a little bit carried away at this point. So intentions are right now to, to focus on something, a natural predator that'll prey on those and eat them. Uh, I'm gonna try some peppermint shrimp and, uh, and see how that goes. Here are my last two groups of A cans. Now in this section, you see here we have the red mushrooms and you can see just how many in a short period of time, and you can go back to the last video to verify it, how many babies have popped up. There's actually, right in frame, you have the large one, and above it there's a baby, and there's four uh, around it, the top one and those three right around that hole. There is another one that fell into that hole right there, um, right there. So I don't know what's gonna become of that one. And then we have all these ones down here. So um, the hopes of this rock filling out with these mushrooms looks like it's going to happen and, and it's gonna be interesting to see how it forms out. Right here are three rock flower anemones. Um, you could just, it's gonna be hard to see it, but right here is a, this one has a red center with these like slate gray edges to it. And then we have the orange one and the yellow one. I'm really liking rock flower enemies, even though I never thought I would, but they're filling out nicely and uh, I'm probably gonna buy some more and put them in that area. Here's another little bit of good news. Right here you can see there's two clownfish again. I picked up uh, one from Aquarium Care Center. It's the black and white one right here. Uh, John, if you can give me a, a comment on the actual name of this. I got so excited about it and so into the conversation with John about you know where he came from and, and stuff like that that I forgot the name of this clownfish. So if you can just drop me a line in the comments to let me know uh, exactly what the name of that one is, I'd appreciate it. At this point in time, since the orange oscillaris is so much bigger than this one, it looks like that one's going from male to female, and this is going to be the male. Part of the change in the tank right here is that the red Montipora has uh, been moved over to the right side of the tank, right in front of the Jabo, and I'm gonna let it grow out there. It's up towards the top of the tank, and it should start spreading downward uh, instead of reaching up for the light, um, because the intensities on the lights have come up in recent days. So um, I really like that it'll fill out this area and instead of being in the middle of the tank shading everything, it gives me a lot of potential to put other corals in its place. Also what I did is I moved the Ghanis from where they were right by the Euphelias and I put them over here. Um, the red and yellow one is liking it but the pink one is just irritated and hasn't come back out. I'm gonna give it some time to settle into this area and see if it'll actually 
get back the polyp extension it had. If not, then I'm going to have to try and find a place for it. Uh, moving down, the section of the Zoa shelf is, is doing well. Okay, so now on to some more of the additions. Right here, I picked this up at I picked this up at Aquarium Care Center's last um, the Halloween show, and it's one of my first acros that I'm really, really enjoying. And that the, the way it looks and the polyp extension on it is ridiculous. So uh, right now I have it on the plug and it's glued to this rock. So I'm going to see if it does well, and if it does, then I will cut it from that plug and mount it to the rock permanently. I have this green encrusting acro right here as well as the Postlepora I picked up from Respy. This is a green acropora that I picked up from Billy Pipes. Um, he didn't want it in his system so he sent it over to me and he knows that I'm on an acro kick lately so Billy I appreciate that and it'll grow out and we'll send some frags back to him. So that was the whole idea about changing the rockscape is to get space to put the acros and the Montes that I need, uh, such as the, the purple one. I have a purple Monty Pora cap in the back. You can see it right there that I picked up from Travis. Uh, the whole idea about the rock work was to give me new places to put some of the new pieces, including, a, I have another piece back here. You can see the green, get out of the way please. The green um, Monty Pora. So now I have a red, a green, and a purple and I'm really excited about the potential of that. Here's a better shot of the green Monty. So it's now on this piece of rock up towards the light. The intentions of this is I'm gonna probably take, you see that tab that's sticking up? I'm gonna frag that off and try grafting that piece of red to the green and see what we get out of it. Uh, that'll be in another video coming up soon, so keep, keep uh, tuned for that. Now here is a, another coral, another acro from Fish of Hex. It's a green coral with blue tips. Really a nice looking piece. The Marnie coral is really doing well since I've put it up. It's now <laughs> more, you can see now from the last video, it's more um, towards the top of the, the water line than ever before. Um, it's about the same height as it was. I didn't change the height of this rock, I just changed its location but that's a lot of growth on that colony and I'm really thrilled about it. Back here is one of my uh, two most prized acros so far. This is the uh, Fish of Hex Millie. The camera does not give this justice at all. This is like a rainbow Millie and it's got a lot of great colors on it and I really am excited about the growth on this. So now what I wanted to do uh, here is to give you a shot of the tank that I don't frequently show. And that is pulled back and showing all the rock work and basically a full shot of the tank. Um, let me know if you like this shot a little bit better than what I'm usually doing. I mean, what I could do from here is, is zoom in close and pan left and right and talk about things or just stay back and give you a full shot of the tank. Um, but while I'm back here, you can see as far as livestock, the main two fish that cruise the reef are the two tangs. Um, they, they're getting along, but you can tell that with the cramped, uh, basically with a 90 gallon tank and the tangs getting a little bit bigger now, um, they are getting a little bit more frisky towards, you, towards each other. The addition of the new clownfish went well. There was no aggression with it and it came, um, I added him shortly before my lights went out. so. Um, it didn't give them much time to do any, ha have any aggression, but even when the lights came on, um, they kind of left him be. And the funny part was the only aggression that was shown to the new clownfish was from the other clownfish, but the, that only lasted about two days and now they're best buddies. Uh, in the rock work, you can see the two cleaner shrimp, their whiskers sticking out of their little hole, and the other fish are hiding in the rock work. Now usually what happens is, towards uh, afternoon when the lights come on, the whites come on, uh, they'll start venturing out and the, the tank will fill up. Uh, it's early morning, so uh, I'm, I apologize for not being able to catch that for you, but 
uh, basically that's what's going on. You can see I picked up that new piece of rock where the three acros are dead center of the tank and I was able to rescape the tank um, to give it a lot more through space uh, for them to swim to swim through and also give me height that I needed for the acros that I'm adding to the tank. So that's pretty much it for this week as far as the update is concerned. Uh, my next video will be coming out shortly and that's going to be my attempt to graft the uh, red Montipore to the green frag that I'm going to put out and we'll see how that goes. So um, that's it for now. As always, this is Scott and I will see you soon around the reef tank. Thank you for watching this episode of Roscoe's Reef with Scott. As always, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe.